most people outside the United States don't really care that the SEC is suing us. I, I'll tell you a very quick, funny story. I'll keep it short. I was in the Middle East last fall and we were meeting with customers. I have a, a, one of the Ripple team members who's based there. It's really early in the morning. My time zones are all screwed up. We're meeting the CEO of a payments company. And uh, you know, but the employee from Team Ripple says, well, why don't you give an update on what's going on at Ripple? And I start talking about the SEC. And after the meeting, he very delicately says to me, no one gives a shit. And his point was, if you're not in the United States, you know, the, the governments in Abu Dhabi, governments in Switzerland, Singapore, uh, UK, Japan, they provided the clarity to how they view and categorize digital assets. And they don't care that the United States SEC has a viewpoint that is, you know, pending in court. Now, this just goes to show you just how much the U.S. is lagging behind when it comes to crypto regulation. And it's this failure of regulation in the crypto industry that continues to stifle innovation and the reason why the U.S. lags further behind other jurisdictions. Failure to set appropriate regulation in the U.S. has resulted to millions of exclusions from the financial system while most Americans are in the search for better alternatives to traditional finance. With that out of the way, let's roll that beautiful intro before we process any further with today's topic. As always, welcome back to MoneySide, your favorite crypto news channel. If you're new here, welcome to the XRP Army. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on your daily crypto news updates. In more interesting news today, we have a tweet from John Deaton where he talks about how on January 1st, 2021, nine days after the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit had been filed, he said it appeared that the lawsuit may have been used as a weapon because it made no legal or logical sense. Listen to her say it was difficult building the technology the last couple of years for cross-border payments without pre-funded accounts. Following that further, we can see the original tweet from Nerd Nation Unbox, where he says that whatever has been shared in the video sounds familiar, then you do believe in grand conspiracies. He further explains that JP Morgan is free to work with blockchain. Ripple, on the other hand, is being stifled in the US. Now that you have context, below is a video by Christine Moy, formerly of JP Morgan, now at Apollo Global with Jay Clayton. Listen in. We have spent the past year working on blockchain-based core banking systems to make global payments more seamless, efficient, and programmable. While building the technology was certainly difficult, the hardest part was working through the various internal and external approvals required for legal and regulatory treatment of the blockchain-based deposit system. We are proud to announce that we are now live and able to facilitate cross-border transfers for corporate clients 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, without being limited by traditional local cutoff times and pre-funding requirements. Additionally, we are continuing the US dollar multi-currency payments clearing system work that we announced with the Monetary Authority of Singapore as part of the Project Ubin Phase 5 last year building a multi-bank shared ledger to enable cross-border and multi-currency payment settlements that are real-time and atomic for the Asian region. Moving further into more updates today, we have a tweet from Gary Gensler urging people to take the SEC investing quiz. I find this pretty fascinating, and I think I agree with John Deaton on this one. Why would we rely on what the SEC says when the OIEA of the SEC tells the people the SEC hasn't made a determination? on whether XRP is a security and may never less than 60 days before it brings a suit, saying all XRP for the last eight years have been illegal securities. Now onto this, this next clip is pretty interesting. I don't know what you all think about this, but it seems pretty clear, like the US government is oppressing its citizens. Listen in and be your own judge. Here's the opportunity of a lifetime and you think it's right to stop them. So I think people need to change the rules. I spoke to the chief fintech officer of Singapore on Real Vision recently, and he, I said, how's Singapore doing it? And he said, well, what we've done is just said, we'll give you risk warnings. So we tell you that it's a risky thing, that it's an early stage investment, and that it could go to zero, but feel free to invest. And like, that seems much more sensible way of going about it than saying, well, if you're, if you're not worth a million dollars, you know, the day you're worth $999,000, you're not allowed to, to invest in certain things and the, the day you go over, suddenly you're now smarter and experienced. It's ridiculous. 
So it has to stop. And now as we wind down on today's video, we can see from 801 underscore XRP that FAM former board director at Ripple, Zoe Cruz, shared that about three years ago she got a call from a headhunter to see if she'd like to join the board of Ripple. This is a revolution that involves both the technology and cryptocurrency. As Chris Larson says, the internet took a decade. How long do you think it will take for the new standard of the financial world to be adopted? Um, none of it is overblown. It is more exciting than it was uh, three years ago when I got a call from a headhunter to see if I wanted to join the board of Ripple. And only three years ago, I said, I have zero interest in that world. <laughs> you know, it's I don't understand it. And it's as Jamie Dimon said, who is my contemporary. I went to business school with him, actually. Uh, you know, I kind of agreed with what he said three years ago. So three years later, I believe, I think it was Sarah that said, this is one of the biggest revolutions, uh, paradigm shifts. Uh, those kind of things don't happen overnight. So it's a false choice to say it's either the current exchanges that process in nanoseconds, millions of trades, or this thing. To me, the right way to look at it, it is, if you accept the fact, it is a, uh, a revolution that involves both the technology and the cryptocurrency, the digital currency, that as Chris Larson, the founder of Ripple says, the internet took a decade basically to have transfer of information, transfer of knowledge. You're talking about transfer of value. So it's huge. It will have a lot of bumps on the road, uh, but it is unequivocal. It will change a lot of things. And, and the way I look at this is I'm old enough to say I joined Morgan Stanley right out of business school in the early 80s. Uh, it was a private company. It was 2,000 people. When I left in 07, it was 60,000 people and it had offices everywhere. So that was a huge revolution. The one that said finance was globalizing, where you were putting users of capital with providers of capital in the global arena. That was huge. So to me, it's, uh, it's not going to take 20 years for this new thing to, to really cement itself but it is beginning to disintermediate to me as all disruptions happen. As always, do your own research and always trade safely, guys. Please keep in mind we're not a licensed financial advisor. All videos on this channel are intended for entertainment purposes only. You can always let us know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and please click on that subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you get informed whenever we post our amazing content. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next Money Side.